beer taste. Yeah, that wouldn't be too important. <laughs> <laughs> but they do it. I like their Founders Ale the best. It's the strongest one. <laughs> If you would stand with me and let's say the pledge and invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunities you give us to, to serve Walton County and to come up here and try to make decisions in our best interest of the citizens and that will also please you. Pray that you'll just be with us and give us discernment and peace of mind, Lord, as we make these decisions and, and guide us as, as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right. Before we get started, uh, if you would, if you haven't already, please silence your phones or turn them off. That way we don't get interrupted too much. Um, I would say we'd have a 9 o'clock time certain close tonight, but I don't think we're going to get there. So, uh, Mr. Dias, what you got? Mr. Chairman, we have um, five <coughs> items that are quite additional that need to be sworn in. Anyone anticipates testifying or speaking before the board tonight, would you please stand and raise your right hand and let me swear you in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give before this board will be the truth? I do. Commissioners, any of you have any ex parte contacts that you've not given to the clerk or to the... No, sir. No. Uh, no. Okay. Very good. Say it again. I couldn't hear you. We skip the minutes. Yeah, we need minutes. Yeah, we need to. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes from last month's meeting? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, the first item we have on our agenda is the Highland House Bed and Breakfast. This is a major project, major development order, um, and I'll ask Vivian Shamo from our staff to brief the Planning Commission on this application. Good evening. <laughs> the Highland House uh, Bed and Breakfast is a major development order application requesting approval for a change of use from a bed and breakfast to a bed and breakfast with a restaurant open to the public. The project consists of 6,196 square feet on approximately 1.25 acres with a future land use of neighborhood infill. Uh, the project is located on uh, Highway 30A and it is uh, just east of the Gulf Place. Uh, little history on the project is that uh, it is a result of a code case uh, where it was found that a uh, there was an unpermitted sign new sign on the property and that sign also advertised for a restaurant um, this is a vested uh, project for a bed and breakfast and uh, there was never a development order for a restaurant applied for so the result was that the um, to rectify the code um, case they would either have to discontinue the use of the restaurant or apply for a development order they have applied for the development order which you have in front of you um, basically they have met the technical requirements um, that come along with the with the process however uh, planning staff had one additional comment that has not been um, satisfied. Uh, we did recommend for an additional compati compatibility analysis and that is a major component to any infill project. Um, they, did they did submit a compatibility analysis, however we did not find it to be sufficient. Um, one other item that has come up um, 
fairly recently is we've received uh, public comment and Carrie, do you have, do they have, they are, you have the additional public comment that we have received in the last few days. Uh, it seems that there are also um, rather large events that are occurring on the property and that is not something that was uh, disclosed in the application or in the compatibility analysis um, which also uh, detracts from the or the impacts from parking noise um, all the things that come along with events is also uh, something that we need to probably look at during this development process so um, I don't know. I have. Do you have you, any questions for staff? Do you feel that staff? we should be here without that compatibility analysis? Well, I think, and maybe uh, Matt can, or Wayne can help out. We basically, the, the process has been dragging on for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, we felt the need that, I mean, it, it either had to go before the Planning Commission and um, Board of County Commissioners, uh, or we had to take them to, uh, to the code board. And they decided to go move ahead with what they had, and um, here we are. But then we have received additional comment in this last week, especially mm -hmm. about the events right. that are going on. Mr. Chairman, the, the compatibility analysis, is, as Vivian mentioned, is a very crucial component of the infield development. Um, and um, the code clearly outlines <coughs> certain areas that must be uh, covered in the compatibility analysis. I think the one that's lacking in the current compatibility analysis is one that's dealing with hours of operation, parking orientation, um, uh, loading, unloading, hours of operation, noise, which is the primary concerns that we see expressed in some of the written correspondence you mm -hmm. have. Um, and so without that information, we feel like that the compatibility analysis is insufficient at this point in time uh, for, us, for us and for the Planning Commission to, to re review this in a necessary way. Um, also, one of the uh, larger issues, I, I don't think the restaurant itself is, is a, the, a big issue. I think the real issue is the, these events that are happening that go beyond a restaurant business, the events that are uh, creating, a, generating a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, those kind of things, weddings and things of that nature, uh, which are not permittable um, under the current application and certainly weren't discussed in the compatibility analysis. And so staff has a, has a that's a critical concern of ours. Okay. Um, because mm -hmm. I, I think the vast majority of, of the complaints we're, that we're getting is dealing with those, uh, those, those events that are occurring. Okay. I have another question too. The fact that it was a, in a code violation, did they continue to operate or were they given permission to operate? Well, it, it essentially what they had, we had a, a notice of violation sent to them. Their remedy was to get it permitted. And so uh, uh, as our standard practice is, um, basically, that code case is held in abatement until it's resolved, either by uh, the business coming into compliance or the business being permitted and coming into compliance. So um, that case has kind of been held, and they have, I believe they still have been operating, um, which I, we don't prohibit until we finally get that rectified. Do they have a certain amount of time, though, to get that done? Because We've been working well, and that's, that's part of the problem here is we've been working with them for, for quite a while. Um, they, they've had some significant issues to resolve, some pretty, pretty large obstacles. They've done a lot of that, um, but I think we're now at the stage where the special events is really the, a big trigger and also the, the this portion of the compatibility analysis that has drawn so much concern. Can and we has gone, I mean, so, so we're kind of, uh, uh, kind of t torn here a little bit because we, we want this to get resolved one way or the other. Either the, well, the, can we give them a certain amount of time to get a, a new compatibility analysis done and then uh, table it until then? Uh, that's, that's certainly yeah. up to the, the, the board. I, wouldn't, I would continue it, not table it. I, well, continue? I, yeah. And that's certainly up to the planning commission if that's what you want to do. Vivian, do you have any comments to that? Well, I, I do. Um, I think we ought to uh, let, the, um, let the agent for the applicant uh, address that <clears throat> question because uh, it has been requested um, for a couple months at least for uh, the uh, compatibility analysis. You have been asking and, for that from them? Yes, okay. and so I think I, I need to let them address it as to <coughs> why we do not have one. Right, and the staff is kind of torn because we want to see this thing resolved one or the other, and so we don't want to delay it any more than we have to. However, 
you know, it's one at of those some th- point something has to be done. True. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, this this is a 2015 um, uh, development order application, and the code case actually um, was, I believe, in 2000 in December of 2014. So wow. it has wow. been going on. Um, when did, can you tell me when the, when you asked them for a compatibility study to be done? Um, well, they did the compatibility study. When okay. we got the, um, uh, I just took over the case a few months ago from Brian who left, okay. um, and uh, we did get, when we did get the compati- compatibility analysis, um, when I looked it over, I didn't find, I found it to be lacking, and it was at that point in time. So it's probably been, probably been about three months. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Were you finding it lacking because they were using golf clubs as most of their compatibility? Or was it because they weren't including subdivisions like next door and single family dwellings around the area? Well, they didn't specifically, um, they, they, they didn't, um, what, one of the um, pictures that they used and examples that they used it was um, a restaurant that is across the street, not <clears throat> in Gulf Place, but at Abacus. And <clears throat> that place is actually in violation of their, um, their outdoor seating. <laughs> and so I said that that was you know, probably not a good example to use. Yeah. Uh, the other locations are also all in village mixed use. They're not in neighborhood infill. Um, so I don't really think you can compare the outdoor you know, outdoor music, that type of thing, to something in neighborhood <coughs> in Phil that's um, in something that's in village mixed use. Okay. I, I hear that it's very difficult parking there, and a lot of cars end up on 30A. And if it did turn into a restaurant, soon to be like a venue, which most restaurants do, it's going to be very crowded, a lot of congestion. Is there a way to limit? You know, events like that. I mean, a, a restaurant. Well, I, don't, I haven't seen anybody really is worried about, like you said, the the restaurant part of it. It's more or less those parties and everything, and right. that's when you get a, a lot of overflow parking. Well, and I, I think there is. A, I mean, in my opinion, the restaurant is a restaurant. The event venue is a, is a different use altogether. Right. Because right. um, you bring a lot more people in there. There's maybe even some maximum maximum occupancies as far as the fire code goes mm-hmm. and those kind of things. Um, so I say those are probably two different things. The Can restaurant you restrict and, it though. Yes, I'm, I'm, I believe that the code restricts it as it is right now. Mm-hmm. Now, it, you know, it becomes a code enforcement issue if they still want to go out there and have have parties and large venues like that. Um, uh, I, but the the restaurant itself, you know, I, I think it's up to the planning commission to make a recommendation. Is that even a, a use that's consistent with that area? And based on the compatibility analysis, does it fit in with with that area? Yeah, I think the problem is the code side of it hasn't bothered them too much up to now. So, right. well, I think that once we, if we answer that question, it gives it, it, it either resolves the code issue uh-huh. or it brings that code issue forward. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but but you know, as I said before, uh, the compatibility analysis part of it's lacking in our opinion. So mm-hmm. that's that's one issue. And if we do want it to go forward, there may be some. Uh, might want to consider some conditions and so forth to recommend as far as the, the use, or if you want to even recommend it at all, if you do recommend no. it conditions. Yeah. I guess we should hear from the applicant. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah, yeah I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a requirement. If a bed and breakfast serves food, that's one thing. Once they have a restaurant, then that rest, the kitchen has to comply both with bed and breakfast rules and with uh, department health rules. Does the kitchen presently meet those requirements? That would be something for the, I think, the, the fire department and the health department. And building department. And building department to determine. Um, yeah. Apparently they're, they're operating and have been, so they. It's, it's I understand that this, this happened unpermitted. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe we have any applications, and so we would have no way of knowing who they've got approval from, uh, I, would, I would venture to say that if we, don't, if we don't know about it, then the building department doesn't know about it. 
from the standpoint of maybe even sort of any kind of kitchen building code regulations as far as gas and whatever else. So my, my assumption would be that the county has not looked at it at all, but I'm not, I can't speak for the building department. I know we haven't seen it. Okay. No, okay. we have not. Uh, I do have a, also a concern about the outdoor broadcasting of music and, and the bufferings and, um, and that as well. And from one email that I read, that they have the, the televisions going um, outside as well for their, uh, for their bar area so okay. and in the time the hours have not been um, defined so all right anything else for staff good okay thank you <coughs> I bet you've been looking forward to this haven't you no, no. <laughs> <laughs> good evening commissioners Jamie Eubanks EU BA NKS with Jenkins Engineering uh, we are the applicant agent for the applicant um, I, I think Wayne and, and Vivian actually laid everything out exactly as it is um, the applicant came to us um, apparently was given this choice by the county um, whether to move forward with a development order application or move forward with a code case they chose the development order application obviously um, we addressed the the concerns in terms of um, there was a roadway that had to be removed some decking things that were in the landscape buffer um, added additional parking, um, things of that nature to bring it compliant with code in terms of the restaurant. Um, in regards to the events that are going on, um, I'll be blunt, I don't know anything of them. Um, the times that they're operating, um, in order to answer those questions, you know, we'd have to ask the applicant. I, I just don't know. I'm not there at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night, unfortunately. Um, it, it certainly is kind of a catch-22. Again, Wayne and Vivian outlined it perfectly. Um, kind of a crossroads where we're certainly not trying to hold up the project because doing that essentially prolongs the activities that are not permitted as they are now. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> can't necessarily answer the questions in regards How to How much events. time do you think you need to get those questions answered? No. A compatibility analysis within like a that. month uh, I mean the next meeting so if we continued it to the next meeting correct I, I don't I think what you'd look at then um, ideally you'd meet with neighbors ideally you'd look at the current code in, term, in terms of events noise uh, I mean certainly we all know this we can't stop them from breaking in in the future uh, I mean yeah. if they're going to play loud music unfortunately it's Kind of out of my control your control um, becomes another code enforcement case this is why we're here already um, i wish i had a better answer for you than that um, what's the parking like out there now uh, we there's the addition i don't know if you can see it on the board there um, with the addition it would be 17 spaces Currently, there are, I think, give or take. Now, currently, it's kind of a free for. Excuse me, 19 spaces. Um, As a restaurant, how many seats does it have? It is. Give me. You have to forgive me. I haven't worked on this entirely. The square footage. I do not know that answer, Mr. Chairman. Well, if we continue it, we'll get all the answers at once. Yeah, we'll get all the answers in, and then they'll be able to answer the questions that the planning department needs to have that. Answer. Surely the applicant will show up. Yeah, they should answer questions as well. Yes, yeah, so we'd. Uh, it's based so. on New York, though. That was giving some time. I can't read it. <laughs> My eyes are so terrible. And I apologize. Scott Jenkins yeah. in our office worked on this, so I'm not as familiar no, with it. To, That's all right. We're going to let you We need, we need to <laughs> come to comment. So. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant right now? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. We'll open up the public portion of the hearing. Is there anybody, a member of the public, who would like to address this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the hearing. Commissioners? I'll make a motion we continue this to the next meeting. I'll second. second. Do you have a date for that? That would be August 11th. August 11th at 5 o'clock. 
We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. There was three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, number two on our agenda is the watercolor planant development and DRI amendment. Uh, I ask uh, Renee Bradley from our staff to brief the planning commission on this application. Good evening. Cliff Stein with SRA Watercolor Crossing LLC is requesting to amend the watercolor development of regional impact and plan unit development by adding 9,498 square feet of retail space. This proposal is to add 7,800 square feet of commercial retail to the existing Publix building and cover the additional square feet shown on the asphalt of the existing building in the amount of 1,698 square feet. This will bring the total commercial allocation for the watercolor DRI to 89,498 square feet. The additional square footage added to the DRI and plan unit development is only for the use of the public shopping center. Uh, staff has received a letter from the Department of um, DO stating that the change is not substantial change and they are revising their letter to include the 1600 for the as -built. Uh Staff has reviewed this addition per the Land Development Code, Chapter 2.062C for substantial deviations to the PUD conceptual detail plans and found that this is not a substantial deviation. Engineering has reviewed the traffic for this amendment and has found that additional square footage proportional fair share amount will be $16,070. Uh, the proportional fair share payment will be addressed at the time of the major development order for the public's expansion. Uh, staff has received several emails from a resident within the watercolor community which had been a handout to you prior to the meeting. Uh, the concerns appear to be more with our process of how we're processing this amendment than the actual change itself. Um, and we believe that um, we've met all of the legal requirements. We have um, received all the mail outs within 300 feet of this property. Uh, and staff finds this project meets Chapter 380 of Florida statutes and the Walton County Land about the Code and Comprehensive Plan. I'll be glad to answer any questions for the board. Commissioners? Where will the parking be? The parking is existing. The expansion is actually not creating any additional parking to be required. Mm -hmm. So the parking that they had was actually enough to cover the expansion because they were already over on their parking. Anybody else? Mr. Davis, you're comfortable with the process? Yes, sir. In fact, I have communicated with that particular individual that I was comfortable not only comfortable, felt like the process that's being asked to comply with chapter, complies with both the statutory law and our ordinance. Did you yeah. give them a direct answer? Uh, as direct as I was going to, yes, sir. And they wanted a direct answer. Yes, sir. Uh, yes I gave them a direct answer. Any other questions for staff? Where, uh, I just want to ask where that 6.51 extra acres was. That's it's not an extra acreage, ma'am. The 6.51 acres is the acres that the watercolor crossing commercial development is on. It's oh, where the public okay. sits right now in the two in retail issue. buildings. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commission. Uh, Commissioners, my name is Jesse Rigby. I'm an attorney out of Clark Partington in Pensacola, and I represent SRA Watercolor Crossings LLC that owns the Watercolor Crossing Shopping Center, purchased it in October of 2013. Uh, there are two aspects of this, as you see. There are two different issues here, and I'm going to <clears throat> introduce Ms. Uh, Michelle Baker in just a moment to tell you what the bottom line here is. This is not as compli uh, complex as it would appear. What makes it somewhat complex is the fact that it's a DRI and there's a county PUD involved there. And so we really have a two-step process. The first step is to ask ultimately, well, you and the county commission to add the square footage to commercial retail because the DRI development order controls at any particular stage the maximum development that can occur within watercolor. And uh, all of this, all of the addition is to the public supermarket. And so 
I realize that's the second part of this aspect of this request, the actual development order. But I want Ms. Baker to explain to you exactly what would be done to the public supermarket itself. Okay. And I think it'll help you understand the process. Thank you. I'm Michelle Baker from Baker Engineers. Um, the applicant decided to go forward with this project because Publix had a, a stream like a space. It's just a very busy store at the Watercolor Crossing Shopping Center. So they're proposing for new construction. It's 7,800 square feet. Of that, 2,802 square feet is dedicated to storage, and then 4,998 square feet would be new retail space. You can see on your site plan that the Publix is, they're wanting to expand the Publix on the south side, 3,749 square feet for retail, and then 819 square feet for storage. And then on the rear or east side of the building where the loading dock is, they would just expand out that loading dock to give them some more storage of 925 square feet. And then finally, on the north side of the building, the expansion would be for 1,058 square feet of storage <coughs> and then 1,249 square feet of extra retail space. And that, that's the only new construction <coughs> proposed. The construction didn't cause any impact to the existing stormwater facility. It would still operate as is with just some minor modifications to where the gutters tie into the system. So that's it, really. Any questions? And again, absent, absent the DRI aspect of this, this would be a fairly simple development order, mm -hmm. that 7,800 square, 7, square feet. But the vertical development cannot proceed without the change in the land use entitlement in the commercial retail area. Uh, and I know some of you may have addressed DRIs and notices of proposed change in the past. This is not a notice of proposed change. And, and the reason is it's specifically a provision that's authorized under the Florida statutes, and everybody refers to it as the E-1 exception. And uh, that exception gives a, gives a list of criteria that must be satisfied. And if you meet those satisfied, those criteria, then uh, the request is not a substantial deviation as a matter of law. And that was kind of the DEO determination. But it may be, I'm quite willing to go through that with you if it's necessary. I've got copies of that ordinance uh, that, are prefer, that refer specifically to the E-1, but the bottom line here is the staff has reviewed that in great detail, as has DEO, and they conclude that it uh, is qualifies for the E-1 exception. And so therefore, you're not being asked to determine whether or not there's a substantial deviation. Uh, I'll be happy to go into whatever detail you need me to do about that. The other any, thing. Yes, yeah, so see if I have any questions. Anybody have any questions mm -hmm. on this? Not yet. Everybody understand? Okay. And the other aspect that's a little confusing is the PUD. I'm not quite sure why St. Joe Company processed a PUD before the DRI, all right? But they did, and I think the best explanation is that PUD also had some setback variations, some variances to setbacks and all, at the time in 1999 when they obtained the PUD. But the uh, PUD is quite frankly, I'd say, subservient to the DRI. All of this project came out of a consent final judgment that I don't know too much about except I've read that and had to do with the, uh, a lot of the property that is ultimately in watercolor. And so there was a PUD concept plan adopted by the commissioners in 1999 under resolution 1999-40. Now you're going to see if you look at a copy of that, it says 1999-39. That's an error, and I think staff would agree. It's actually 1999-40. And what it said and is that all development permits issued for the property, with the exception of a development order adopted <coughs> pursuant to Section 380.06, that's the DRI development order, shall be consistent with the PUD concept plan for the project adopted by the ordinance. 
So it, it recognized there was going to be a DRI, and the consent <coughs> final judgment actually required that this development be processed as a DRI. That same PUD concept plan included this other provision in Section 2D. To the extent that the PUD concept plan for the project is inconsistent with a development order for the project, as may be subsequently adopted pursuant to Section 380.06, St. Joe shall request an amendment to the PUD concept plan so that the PUD concept plan will not be inconsistent with such development order for the project. In other words, the DRI is going to ultimately control. And the original DRI development order, which was also then in 1999, it was uh, resolution 1999-79, it was consistent. And it included the same land use authorizations that are included in the DRI that were included in the PUD. So the only thing really different about, different about the PUD had to do with setbacks and those issues, technical standards. There's been one modification to that DRI development order, and that was in 2002. And there's one provision there that's important because the county commission, when it adopted the 2002 change, included this provision. The villages at Seagrove plan unit development, concept plan, and they're known by both villages at Seagrove and Watercolor. Adopted by the Board of County Commissioners on July 13, 1999 by resolution number 99-40 is hereby amended to be consistent with the provision set forth above in sections 3, 4, 8, and 9. The, the DRI amendment did make changes in 2002, and then a provision was added there to change the PUD in exactly the same manner, so that the PUD always stayed consistent with the DRI. Uh, what we have done, and the same thing here, this is a joint, if you will, PUD and DRI application, and the proposed resolution that staff has provided to you and that we drafted and it's been approved, I believe, through the uh, county attorney's office, includes the same provision so that whatever changes the county commission makes to the DRI are automatically changed. The PUD concept plan from 1990 is modified in exactly the same way. And frankly, that's a requirement of the way this is set up. I may have made that more confusing than when we started, but you that's what... About five minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, The only uh, issue in the DRI concept of plan that, that's an issue here, quite frankly, is traffic. And uh, there's really no issue about the amount of traffic being developed or being created here. Uh, the county, and we proposed a somewhat lesser amount initially. The county engineer, Preble Rich, reviewed that. They had a somewhat higher number of trips. That's fine. We accepted that. And ultimately, it was determined that the 7,800 square feet would produce 14 peak hour trips for which proportional fair share has to be paid. We then, staff, identified this extra 1,698 square feet of inconsistency between prior as-built and development orders. Somebody had to deal with that. We agreed to deal with it to bring the records consistent, and, and it added four additional trips that have never been paid for. My client, as part of this, is being required to pay for those additional four trips, so it now creates 18 trips, and the proportional fair share is at $16,070. So we're addressing that. To the best of our knowledge, even though those are really St. Joe issues, we brought everything into consistency that anyone knows about that's a discrepancy. That's the best way to put it, I believe. Uh, the traffic, though, is a very minimal impact. I want to say it's like 1.1% of the 1,711 traffic trips that were approved as part of the initial DRI. It does not trigger any substantial deviation issues. I'll be happy then to uh, try to answer any other questions you might have about the DRI and the PUD. I, 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 I do have just a couple. And Renee may be the better person. I, I just I'm reading one of the, the <coughs> one of the objectors' emails, and I just received this afternoon was that the 
the consent judgment attached an exhibit that shows this property as a golf course. Tell me how that changed. Uh, I would have to have it in front of me. Okay, here. Uh, <laughs> let me see. It's the consent judgment's at the end. If I might offer a comment there, I read that. I saw this about 4.30 this afternoon. It's handed to me. I'll tell you, quite frankly, that is so, that's 1999. That is such a historical issue, even if true, and I have no idea whether it's accurate or not accurate. The time to deal with that problem or for anybody to object to a completed watercolor crossing shopping center was Before more than know. 15 years ago. And this was prior, prior to the PUD and the DRI being adopted, so the master plan overlay is not <coughs> That's what I thought. I just want to make sure it was in the record. The master plan overlay in the PUD was adopted subsequent to the Okay. Any other questions? I have one more. Hang on. Just make sure I am clear on everything. Um, I know that the gentleman raised issues about notice. I can't find any notice problems. I'm sure that Mr. Davis is he's much more adept at those issues than am I, uh, but I sure. I think we provide all the notices that have been required. I got the other question answered. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. We had nobody signed up to speak. We're going to open the public hearing. Is there any members, anybody in the audience that would like to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the hearing. Commissioners? I'll make the motion that we amend and um, let the commissioners decide. Motion for approval? Mm -hmm. We have a second. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further questions? Well, yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, number three, uh, we've already heard, the, uh, I believe, the description of this already, but number three is the public expansion at Watercolor Crossings. Um, if anyone wants to come up and give a brief synopsis, but this is something we've already heard a minute ago as well. Okay. I think you guys have got a gist of what we're doing with this next project already. Um, I think Michelle's done a very good job of explaining to you what we're adding to the public shopping center. We're at the same location. Um, we're adding 7,800 square feet to the building. Uh, the parking that's already existing, we don't have any technical comments except for traffic, and which I've already stated, the proportional <laughs> fair share's got to be paid. And I'll be glad to answer any questions for you. Guys. Any questions? Thank you, Renee. Do y'all have anything further to say or you want to rest on what no, you want uh, to talk about? If you have any technical questions, just make sure okay. to answer them for you. Okay. I have one technical question. Okay. If the parking lot gets too overcrowded, which it is usually every Saturday and Sunday, <coughs> where does St. Joe propose to put more parking for this additional square footage? Well, it's not St. The applicant's not St. Well, Joe. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's who I think of it is. But it's fine. Yeah. Um, well, the parking was addressed based on you know, the different uses mm -hmm. that are going on out there just to make sure technically it meets all the requirements. So there's no overflow plan. There's no overflow traffic. It just technically meets the exact it meets minimum. The requirements mm -hmm. Right. And, and basically we remember that this is a plan unit development. There is some deviations in the PUD, which mm -hmm. like most plan unit developments, but the parking, it meets the requirements of the parking for the PUD. Anything else? Okay, we'll open the public portion of the hearing. I don't believe we had anybody sign up to speak. Is there anybody that would like to speak? Seeing none, commissioners? We have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve, but I'd like to recommend that they do have um, some plan B for extra parking. I don't think it's going to be sufficient enough parking if they keep adding on to the stores. Okay. I think you're going to have to go and go in and well, I'll second for um, discussion, but I think you're going to have to then change the, the comp plan, aren't you? Well, to, to change the parking requirements for a PUD, you got to go back and amend the PUD. I think one thing that, yeah. that uh, as Renee mentioned, uh, you know, the parking standards are what we have. I mean, we hear a lot of issues about parking. The parking standards are what they are in our in our land development code. So if someone meets those parking standards, they've met the parking standard. We can't make them 
exceed the parking standard? Uh, I, I think it would be very difficult. Um, as far as the, the PED goes, and again, I don't have it in front of me, but they, they very well may have had some, some uh, modification to that parking. I don't, I don't know. I believe the expansion that we have here tonight is not a generator of, of, uh, of additional parking. I believe it's more storage and things of that nature, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It's just adding to the current store. Right. So I mean, it's not like you're adding retail space, are you? Right. Well, it also we are puts adding some board. retail space, and in, in it's um, about 5,000 square feet. About 2,000 of it was storage, um, or 2,800 was storage, if I'm, if I'm correct, and so a little bit less than 5,000. So that's not a whole lot of additional parking spaces for retail. I mean, and like mm -hmm. I said, they were already on the ground. They had additional parking to begin with. And, and all we can do is make them meet our code. I mean, I'm sure that if the Planning Commission wants to recommend that, that's, that that's definitely can be done. But the process to do that would be to have to go back and amend the PUD because that was approved uh, many we, years ago. I mean, we could, we could ask that they consider something. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can require them to <coughs> correct. Do it. correct. And, and we got to remember also, as far as the PUD goes, we got St. Joe that's a declarant of basically the PUD and the DRI, and this is just one small owner right. for the public shopping center. So they're not the ones that did the deviations. You know, they, they bought this already built. Right. And, to, am and to amend those deviations, we'd be looking at St. Joe. Not, and not this applicant and also this is a shopping center there's other businesses that are in here that uh, have parking so they would as well uh, Publix is probably the largest uh, uh, retailer in there but there are it others is. as well right mm -hmm. thank you well, well, right, I was just going to say to <laughs> well I, I don't know how to verbally put did you want to say something I was just going to say too you said they keep adding on but the, they'd be out of space because they couldn't add any more parking, so therefore they wouldn't be adding any more square footage. So it's yeah. not like they would keep adding, yeah. if that makes sense. Well, do we need to have competing motions? Or well, I mean, no, we, we have to no. this one, I think, first or, or amend it. Yeah. We, well, can, we can, uh, you know, make a suggestion. Yeah, it's, it's just a suggestion. Amend, it doesn't. And then suggest to them yeah. to consider I mean, an amendment if it, they needed to add more. So the parking. motion is just for approval, but right. suggest that they consider that if it if, becomes needed. If it comes needed. A motion to approve the recommendation for additional parking. Say, say suggestion instead of recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Recommendation carries weight. So that's okay. That's a good motion and second. Yeah, I'll second this too. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And Carrie, before we go on, the, the <laughs> emails that we received late this afternoon are part of the record and part of the staff. Okay. I believe the emails were handed out at each of the yes. members of the yes. planning commission's yes. desk. Do you want me to put in here that they were part of the record? Yes, in, in both of those. In both of those. Mr. Chairman, number four on our agenda is New Bama Steel. This is a uh, major development order application uh, being reviewed by our staff member, Rita Bahayani. And I should have come forward. Thank you. Um, the New Bama Steel is a major development order uh, submitted by Choctaw Engineering to develop a 7,000 square foot warehouse and office building on a half an acre lot on Ser Saranoa Road with the future land use of Business Park, and it's within the Satwaden uh, Commerce Park PUD, which was previously approved in 2003. Um, the site is currently vacant, and the current uh, proposal meets all the uh, previously approved uh, PUD uh, requirements. Um, if you have any additional questions. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Is that, is that that St. Joe Business Park over there? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. South uh, Park next to the proposed New Square Park and LD. Yeah, okay. Right. So it's, is it across the street from that beer place that they're making? Beer brewery? <laughs> And before you get more that, you're concerned about the quality of the steel. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I'm not certain, but I believe so. Watch out crossing the road. <laughs> Anything else for staff? Okay, thank you. Is anybody here from the applicant who would like to speak? 
anybody here? He said he's here. He said he Wow. Okay. We'll go ahead and open the public portion. John. Okay, you don't, you don't want to speak? Okay. Um, is there anybody else, members of the public, who would like to address this? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the hearing. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? I'll make the motion we approve. I'll second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Shall we move on to the next 10 items? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. The last item on our agenda is uh, Indian Woman Road Lot Subdivision. Again, I'll ask Rita to come forward and uh, brief the Planning Commission on this application. I think Rita's getting off too early, too easy with these, <laughs> these items here. Uh, the Indian Woman Road uh, Lot Subdivision is a major developmental reapplication submitted by Jenkins Engineering uh, requesting approval to divide a parcel into two single family lots on a, a, approximately one acre lot uh, with the future land use of neighborhood infill. The project is located on Indian Woman Road and currently this is one parcel with two single family homes and they are proposing to split the lot into two um, to be able to separate the two single family homes. The proposal meets all the setback requirements um, that we have. Um, and I, if you have any additional questions, there's no outstanding comments on this. Any questions for staff? You had one condition on there? There was one condition that you had on there about uh, the VBN being on the plat? Yes. Yes. To show on the final plat that the um, buffer will not be disturbed. That's, yeah, that's the only condition. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. What reason did the applicant give for dividing it up like that? They cannot sell. Uh, the single family lots if they are one parcel um, and they possibly wish to do that. There are two residences on the Yeah, two residents. They cannot have two ownerships okay. unless it's family. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, ma'am. Is there nobody, anybody here from the applicant? I'll make you say one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Eubanks with Jenkins Engineering. Uh, just to elaborate on that question, way back in the day, for whatever reason, two building permits were issued on the same parcel for two single-family residences. Um, just trying to correct that mistake. Okay. okay. Anything else for the applicant? Open the public portion of the hearing. Then nobody signed up. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? So you know, we'll close the public portion of the hearing. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there, a, do we need to, before we leave, deal with the vice chairman the vice position? Jamie swinging 50 50 today. David Smith yes. proved himself. No, no. David Smith has been David nominated Smith to be vice nominated. chairman. <laughs> All in favor? Is, is, that a, is that an official nomination? That's an official That's nomination. Official nomination. Okay, I need a second. Second. Ooh, that we have a cool. motion, we have a second. Anybody else wish to nominate anybody to be vice chairman? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll get your jacket made up. <laughs> we are adjourned. Now I go to right. Publix. <laughs> right. Did you have one? Yeah. Now I get to go to the store. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm so worried about that. The parking was so bad on Saturday night. We had to drive around 15, 20 minutes to even find a park. It's that bad. You know what's going to happen.